then this was my next station. <laughs> oh, wow. That's different. You see those letters right there? Yep. Numbers. I painted them. I was the one that raised them bigger. They used to be small numbers, <laughs> just, just about that big. Mm. So I said, I want people to see the ship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> let me get away with it. The bosun's mates were in charge of everything on the deck. Mm -hmm. One time up in the Arctic, uh, when seas were real rough, all the, all the paints were kept in the cold, so called uh, paint locker down in, inside the bow here. Mm -hmm. So, after the morning after the storm finally settled down, and it also did a little bit of uh, damage here. The, the uh, railing going all the way around here, the bulkhead right in there in front of the, the five inch gun right here. It was all bent backwards from the seas. Jeez. Yeah, that was iron rail going all the way around there. Just, and then the ladder going up the, the uh, port side of it there was all bent. <laughs> that way. Wow. But open the hatch, look at that, all the, and the paint was in cans, five gallon cans like that, white and, white and gray and black. <laughs> they were all broken open. Oh. And the whole bottom of the bow was full of paint. <laughs> Pure, unadulterated, except mixed. Yeah, paint. mixed all together. <laughs> <laughs> we had to clean it out, so we, and and it got it got suffocated. It stayed down very long. Got taken over by the noxious fumes. Sure. Because they were all oil-based paints in those days. They didn't have any acrylics. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we took turns going down in there and scooping up big scoops and hauling them up in buckets mm -hmm. with the ropes again, and then. Pouring it over sides into the Atlantic Ocean, and that's it. Took hours to do that. Then another day, three rough seas, and right back in here. Okay. There's a lifeboat right there. Mm -hmm. And you see the Davitha zone right there. Yes, a little black part there. Yeah. Yeah, that's where they raise them out. Uh, I was on deck with the fog, quarter, a bosun's mate, and it was rough. And so we were the only ones allowed on deck. We had to check to make sure, because we had uh, depth, depth charges all along the deck on port and starboard sides. They, mm -hmm. were, in, they were in, they were a fast as locked down, but they were a couple of lines here, a couple of lines there, and same way on the other side. And so we had to make sure they didn't break loose. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I was walking on the starboard side there, just walking forward toward the front of the boat and, uh, or ship, did we say? And I just happened to look up. And as I looked up to the starboard, here comes a big sea. It was beautiful, it was up like over my head, up like a, with chartreuse. <laughs> Shade of green because the sun was shining through it. Uh huh. When you're on the shore on the beach, you know, you see a, a green one coming. Well, that's what this is up in the North Atlantic, and that's a big one. Oh, man. Not a little thing, foot, two foot tall. This thing's up there like that, and I'm looking up at it, and I yelled at what Daisy do with the other boatswain's mate. Hang on. We had, we had lines attached between here and back here. Uh huh. There's open space all in there. The midships, as they call it, on both sides of the of the ship, and their their hawsers are about that thick. And we uh, both grabbed the lines. About that time, it collapsed right down on top of us, and I'm hanging on with both hands. And I'm looking back at Daisy doing. He's further back, about fifteen feet, twenty feet toward the stern. He's hanging on. His arms are here. His feet are out here. Mm. Feet are out there. In other words, we're straight out, both of us. And then we, the only thing that kept us alive and not washed away was the hawsers. Mm -hmm. They were limp. You, they would move, you know, if I was on a steel structure, we'd have been ripped loose. 
wow. the thing on the roof they had that give to them but then finally when i stood up again the world was almost up to my knees really and the deck decks are bowed to have more run off they don't mm -hmm. have flat decks i mean they kind of have a curve to them there and then i looked at the starboard quarter and there's the damn uh, lifeboat that had been over my head, floating in the seas. Whoa! <laughs> and that was one of the whole twenty-some men. Really? Painted orange, you know, <laughs> so you could see it. And the water was green, greenish blue, mm -hmm. and clear. And I looked. I oh crap! I real quick ran forward up the ladder up to the top to the uh, to the wheelhouse. The officer in charge said, "Hey." Life raft just got ripped loose, and they went and looked. Had to turn the ship around, <laughs> go back and get it. But that's what the seas can do to you, you know. I mean, it's in just it's, an instant. Another time, I was on the up in the Arctic, and this and this right here, of course, is the stick as we called it, a okay. bell right here, a cover for the uh, radar. Okay. It's three o'clock. Thank you for the radar <laughs> and. Uh, it went on the blink. Well, without the radar, we couldn't do anything. We didn't have all the fancy stuff like I told you earlier, like we have today. Mm -hmm. And so the electricians con uh, technician and I were told to go up the stick so you could lift that bell tower off the cover off of the radar so you get to the electrician to you get in there and work on the wiring. You see what was the problem? Mm -hmm. Well, the Ladders went up on the port side, the left-hand side, in other words. So I'm climbing up the thing with my foul weather gear on. <clears throat> it's night and it's rough. And so I'll climb at the port side of the, of the stick there, the staff. And the, the ship would roll to the port. Well, when it's rolling this way, I'm hanging off the gear light. <laughs> It to roll back, but it would meanwhile it would roll forward as the bow as the stern would go up and the bow would go down in the seas. Then it would come up and then it would roll hard to starboard. When it went to starboard, I'd be in the port side so I could scramble up some more steps, you know. And I say steps, rungs. Right. <laughs> that was that. But got up to the top and then I just lifted, undid all the dogs around the bell. Lift it off, and he did the rest of the work. I just lay there, hanging on, waiting for it to stop. I had a little, little box there, with a little cage-like thing where we could sit. And so got that done. Got down. We got below. Then the old man, the captain, called me. Both of us in his office, into his quarters. We go in there, and he sits down a bottle of booze, and he opens it up, pours a drink for himself, and one for each of us. He's, he's Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> the other time was, was stupid. It was stupidity. It was a, I was in charge of dropping the lifeboats into the water. We had a crew and they just gotten out of boot camp, a new crew. And we were off of Bermuda and we we're just having drills, lifeboat drills. We had drop them in the water and leave the ship and wait for the flag as they come out and then mm -hmm. read the flag, what they said, go right, go left, come back or whatever. And then when we got the right, right signal, we go back to the ship. Well, they're all all row and everything. The funny part about this particular trip, the line goes from the deck up to the block and take all, and then it goes down to the boat. So you have the line down here, and you have to release it and go up there, and then the bow drops down. Bow drops down. And they do the same thing with the stern. Well, then they have to get to a certain point to let the men get in board, on board the boat, the lifeboat, because they're going to have to, they're about, they're about to row it once we get in the water. And also for safety, they have to learn in case there is a real emergency. And there's usually cooks and, and all the other kind of guys that aren't up on the deck to begin with. But anyway, they went ahead and got in the boat, but we had a, the line going, the line going from the deck up. We have another line we had to marry it roll twist around it and that keeps it locked when you change from the line over here over, or swing it around so you drop the boat down well everything was going fine but then we had a new officer on board just right behind me he just got out of the boat into the uh, officer candidate school and he tells him hurry it up hurry it up hurry it up well the guys listened to him instead of me 
so they released the lines prematurely on the stern. Well, when that happened, oh boy, the stern of the boat just dropped right down toward the water. Mm -hmm. The bow's still the bow's still up here, but the stern's down there, and and the, there and there, and I'm up on the deck. Well, I saw the line spinning because there's it's four and one, so to speak, it going up and down a couple times, three, four times. So I grabbed the lines I was marrying with my hand, hold, trying to stop them. And one line's going down, the other line's going up. And well, that just burned right through the skin of my thumbs, right down to the bone. Really? And, oh, yeah. Oof. This one just got burned, but that went right down to the bone. And, and meanwhile, a, a um, quarter of one of the uh, chiefs came by and he real quick grabbed the line too. And between us, we got the thing stopped. And that's when we were able to secure it. And then we, drop the stern end down, down, I mean the bow end down to balance out. Then we were able to drop it down in the water. Well, then I had to run the damn boat. I had to climb down the ladder, down a, a netting to get into the boat and then steer it and then watch for signals when we got, so, and then turn and come back with the salt water burning the hell out of my fingers. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> I say. Back, I had to climb up out there, you know. So then anyway, the word got back to the old man. Well, I had to have my hands bandaged up, but. Then the old man called me down to his office, you know, down his quarters. And both these guys would appreciate what you did. And <laughs> you know, that have alcohol on board the ship. So he pulled his private private reserve out of the drawer, you know. And so that was another story. But there's so damn many things that happened in your tenure, mm -hmm. as you would say, you know. Anyway, that was basically that. All right. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> very entertaining <laughs> stories, as always. And uh, I'll have a piece of beer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just want to thank you again. I really, really appreciate you taking the time <laughs> to do this. <laughs>